Welcome back to Rereading Virtual Storytime for the week of May 17th, 2021. This Thursday, May 20th, is World Bee Day. So we're going to read about bees and make our own little beehives. Bees, Bees Count by Allison Formento, illustrated by Sarah Snow. Mr. Tate's class loved taking field trips. Today their bus went to a farm. Farmer Ellen led the class through a big field. There weren't any cows, horses, or sheep. There were only bees and tall flowers. Amy picked a flower and twirled it. Eli looked around. Is this a flower farm? Farmer Ellen smiled. No, but we grow lots of wildflowers. They walked through a grove of blossoming apple trees. Is this a tree farm? Natalie asked. Trees grow here, Farmer Ellen said, but at the Busy Bee Farm, we farm bees and honey. Honey tastes good, said Jake. Eli held on to Mr. Tate. Bees sting. Only when they're afraid or angry, said Farmer Ellen, and beekeepers always dress for safety before visiting the hives. Farmer Ellen took everyone to a small shed. Mr. Tate helped give out beekeeper gear. The children pulled white jumpsuits over their clubs. Shin smoothed the net over her face. Here comes the bride. We all look like astronauts, said Jake. I feel safe in here, said Eli. Farmer Ellen showed the class a field full of tall boxes. Welcome to the bee yard. These are bee houses or apiaries. Honey bees live here in hives. Most fly out each day to work. Bees work? Jake asks. Yes. They collect pollen, which is tiny powder-like grains and flowers, for their food. This powder is carried on their legs to crops, flowers, plants, and trees, and helps them grow. Sharing pollen in this way is called pollination. Sharing's good, said Shen. Farmer Ellen pushed a can with a long spout into a hole in the back of one bee house. This smoker will help us see the bees. She squeezed the handle and wisps of smoke puffed out. Hundreds of bees followed the smoke trail and flew into the air. Farmer Ellen said, Now watch them work and hear what they say. Bees don't talk, Amy said. They do, Farmer Ellen said. Listen to their buzz. Everyone watched and listened, and this is what they heard. One by one we zip up high, buzzing through the bright blue sky. We fly over two waving dandelions, inviting us to visit. We find three wild strawberries bursting with sweetness. Four apple blossoms tickle us with soft petals. Five poppies stretch tall, greeting us like best friends. We stop for a drink where six farmhands water a crop of raspberries. Be sure get thirsty, Jake said. Shh, said Amy. They're still buzzing. We see seven clovers dance in the sunlight. Eight flowering cherry trees shimmer pink and white. In the garden, nine shiny pea pods flutter in the breeze. Before we fly home, ten tulips stand and nod, thankful for our pollen. Buzzing, flying, working, we do more than you may know. Each of us is nature's farmer helping food and flowers grow. What did you hear? asked Farmer Ellen. Bees count, Chin said. Why else are bees important? Mr. Tate asked. They make honey, Natalie said. Yes, said Farmer Ellen. Bees drink nectar, a sweet liquid from plants, and carry it back to their hives. Why? asked Natalie. Juice inside a bee's stomach changes the nectar into honey, said Farmer Ellen. Bees spit the honey into a honeycomb made from their beeswax. Then worker bees dry the new honey by flapping their wings faster than we can blink. Jake and Natalie tried flapping their arms as fast as bee wings. Amy knelt to watch a bee on a clover blossom. Bees sure are busy. Yes, said Farmer Ellen, and without bee pollen, crops wouldn't grow and we wouldn't have food to eat. Eli said, bees are nicer than I thought. Farmer Ellen smiled. It's time to check the hives. Everyone helped slide the wooden frames from the bee houses. They found one, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten golden honeycombs. Farmer Ellen said, To get honey from the honeycombs, we'll use an extractor. This machine spins honey out, which then flows into jars. We put a cap on tight and label the jar all ready to take home. Before the class boarded the bus to leave, Farmer Ellen pulled jars from a crate. Would you like a gift from the bees? Sweet, said Jake. Thanks for the honey bees, shouted Natalie. And for helping plants grow, said Shin. A bee whisked past Amy's ear. She waved at it. The end. Okay, so let's make some honeycomb here. Um, I have a template of a beehive. It's a cutesy version of something you might find in nature. Of course, they're not as perfect as this, but bees do do a nice job. So, um, you want a yellow or brown or goldish or whatever paint, you can mix brown in with it. I'm just going to use plain yellow. Um, bubble wrap, but don't pop it. Don't pop it till you're done. Um, this is going to give us a little honeycomb feel. And then if you got the craft to go kit, you have these little um, bees that I punched out with the die cutter. Um, they are marked on both sides, so you can have them face either way. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Sharpie, which this is definitely an adult job um, or older kid. I'm going to draw some bee stripes on there because I like the striped bees and um, so I'm just gonna do that really quick um, I'm just following what they um give them a little nose they usually have a black head this to all four of them before I glue them on. And then you'll also need glue. Um, you can use tacky glue, will probably work well. Um, you can also use a glue stick if you put a lot of them there. Um, or even just glue glue will work fine. And you're going to stick those wherever you like them. Um, you know, because usually their legs are black too. They don't turn yellow until you get a bunch of pollen on them. Um, so I don't know if you guys have seen a lot of bees. Um, make sure that when you're looking at them, they are bees and not other things. Because there are other insects out there that aren't as kind as bees. Now, again, from the book you learn that bees will not sting you unless they feel threatened or um, you make them angry. So if you scare them, they might sting you. So just be calm around bees. Um, and if you start spotting at them, they might get mad and sting you. But otherwise, bees are very nice. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna take the bubble wrap. I have a paintbrush here. You can dip it in, but I think that it works better um, when you paint on it. Now, granted, this means it's going to get all over your hands, but when doesn't it? We always get painty, don't we? All right, well, at least Miss Nikki always gets painty. So I'm just painting on that, and then I'm going to stamp it. I'm going to try to keep it inside the beehive lines. It's not going to be perfect. So there's that. And if you want to just put it in and just dab it, That'll probably get paint on your hands too. So it doesn't really matter which way you go about it. So I'm going to go ahead and just paint this and then we'll come right back. Okay, so you can see some of the bubbles there. Um, where I overlap more, you'll see less bubbles just because it, the overlapping kind of the paint together. Um, so I got my glue. I'm just going to take and put a little bit on the backs of these. Okay, that's way too much. Let's 
just wipe that off before I stick that on there. Okay, I'm gonna have all mine facing kind of towards the hive. Look at that, guys. Okay, so I got two of them that face this way. So I'm just gonna put them facing the hive. And you can see there's lots of goo, glue, goo, gooey glue kind of pushing out. There's one there. And this little one is going to be up here. And that's about it. Uh, if you don't have little die cut bees, um, you can go ahead and cut them out of paper or draw them on yourself, or you don't even need bees. Um, and this uh, beehive is online on our Facebook page. So if you need to print a new one, you can, and that's it.